Sitaraman. Yeah. Good afternoon. Welcome to Doha Bank's Knowledge Management Forum. We focus today on the developments in Ukraine and the resulting economic implications. Could you tell us what are the key economic developments in relation to Ukraine? Well, the G7 sanction is, is a major turbulence in the whole frame. While the world is becoming flat, this sudden tension between Ukraine and Russia has just really reignited the, the overall uh, issues. The global growth is going to be very contentious now. Look at the bigger picture as such. If there is sanction, it's going to cripple some part of the world. And then the road will be bumpy. Now, in terms of overall economic substance, Ukraine is an important player, uh, nearing 200 billion, under 95 to 200 billion dollar worth of GDP they produced. They are under uh, reform process. IMF has clearly stipulated some value driven uh, you know, initiatives to politically redefine, structurally realign to promote economic momentum. Those nuances are in the making and this sudden turbulence has completely destabilized. Ukraine owes 13 billion debt this year and 16 billion before the year end. Without the help, they will be defaulting. That's the major issue. And again, Russia would wait until it reforms the new government before fully implementing the 15 billion bailout deal. That you need uh, Ukraine to execute this. They need this 15 billion. If IMF is not going to support, if G7 is not going to support, who is going to you know, make this transition truly effective? So it is a really, really in a mess. Could you tell us what exactly is the importance of the Ukraine economy in relation to the global economy? It's very important. The strategic, uh, the, uh, the geography uh, where it is designed is, is quite important. Now, uh, the Russia supplies almost 30 percent of the gas requirements through Ukraine. And again, Ukraine also taking the natural gas from Russia. So there are bills pending, payable. In as good as February, bill is not being paid. So if Russia wants to play the hard ball, then the issue becomes very contentious and that's precisely the, uh, the uh, stagnation of the whole frame. Once economic capacity is not there to repay your bills, then politically you get entangled. And that's what it is. In terms of economics, it is producing soya beans, it's producing wheat, it's producing corn. And they are all at stake. When there is uh, industrial unrest, social unrest, the, the output becomes you know, absolutely stagnated. And that's what we are seeing here. So, Dr. Sitharaman, how is Ukraine planning to work on the market reforms? Well, those reforms have been well set in. The IMF has a precondition set in how, what sort of uh, opportunity they have to bring in to enlarge the market oriented reforms. They want to create a free market dynamics. They also want to, uh, you know, uh, bring in assistance from World Bank and other international financial institutions. The European Union uh, is, is very supportive of the Ukraine initiatives. Now, G7 has committed itself for economic assistance. So, uh, revival, as long as Kiev agreed to pursue the economic reforms sought by IMF, everyone will support. But those reforms are very, very important for economic momentum. Could we have your comments on the earlier bailouts of Ukraine? Well, it was agreed 15 billion Ukraine was supposed to uh, receive. Uh, you know, in 2010 and there after 2011 and 12, there are uh, periodic payments supposed to come. That's that's not happening. Uh, last agreed loan was uh, 15 15 billion in 2010, and uh, it went out of track. And I am have emphasized unless you know implement economic reforms, I am will not going to fund a state Ukrainian government comes into place. Nobody is going to give you any funding. Could we have the highlights of the impact of the Ukraine crisis in Russia? It's got a huge crisis. Now, if it's, you could see clearly the sanction is on and uh, proposed measures by G7, uh, the global governance now is becoming strong and they're coming together. And, uh, you know, Russia, the Gazprom turned up economic pressure on Kyiv government. They have to settle the bills, as I said, 1.9 billion for the last month, again, two months, uh, 2 billion for the uh, this month. 
So those are outstandings which is payable. And uh, again, there is a stagnation in the supply chain to Europe. If Russia decides to cut the supplies, then they have to get the gas supplies from somewhere else. Where are they going to get from? United States, Europe, where from? And those are intricate and the questions need to be answered. So uh, gas pump is more important. Russian gas company is more important uh, in, the, in the overall picture. Are they going to supply to Kyiv? Are they going to supply to Crimea where Russian legitimate interest is there? So these are the questions which need to be answered. A lot of unanswered questions in the whole frame. What are the measures brought in by the international community? Measures, serious measures have been attempted. Now, it remains to be seen how far it's going to be effectively executed. Now, territorial integrity has been challenged according to G7. The Republican-led U.S. House Representative passed a bill on March 6th to impose sanction and also, uh, you know, cripple Russia in every form and substance. Individuals or institutions or banks or, um, you know, all, always this is going to create more confusion in the global space. So, uh, transaction-based processing to Russia will be uh, on check and balance. Hungary, Poland, Slovakia and the Czech Republic are urging the U.S. to boost gas exports to hedge against uh, the Russia gas cutoff because they all need Obama and uh, you know, Chancellor Merkel agreed on the need for Russia to pull back its forces. They are all insisting Russia has to oblige. It is uh, the political and economic dimensions needs to be measured and managed. Russia warns on U.S. sanctions over Ukraine would have a significant impact U.S. as well. Freezing the assets, you know, making sure uh, the uh, the bilateral trade or investments, banking and finance is not taking place. The one aspect, but what impact it will have in the global economics, it remains to be seen in total perspectives. What are the implications you foresee, Dr. Sitaraman, on ac account of the Ukraine tensions? Well, uh, it is, this will have direct impact on the commodity market. It is oil, it is Brent or WTI, the prices are, uh, went up as and when the Ukraine uh, issue cropped up. Natural gas went up to, you know, again, on account of severe weather as well as the Ukraine crisis. Now, where is the solvency for this? Commodity prices, if it goes up, inflation will, will again ignite in emerging markets. So this has got global implications. It's not confined to one country or two countries. We are living in an interconnected world. Emerging markets will have to pay the price if the energy prices, energy security you know, is not fixed. The price are going to go up again. The monetary policy will have a different dimension. Inflation has to be contained in, in, in prospects. And also we are, we are going to see what happened to the supply chain to Europe? Who is going to fund the uh, deficit? Who is going to have additional uh, supply? Where are all the capacity built in? This has got wider implications in terms of energy supply. Again, agricultural commodities, wheat or uh, corn. So definitely we need to be uh, watchful on the global changes, dynamics which are getting changed on account of politics which will have wide implication in terms of economics as well. Thank you for your insights, Dr. Sitaraman. Thank you.